So here's the offending article. Oh, she won't get on. Right, so one alternator, a uh, couple of leisures by the look of it, and the starter. And yet yeah, that uh, that relay there looks some kind of suspicion. First test, really. Do I have the red light on the alternator, which I do. So what I want to check is, do I have the charging voltage on the starter and do I have it on the leisures? So I'm just peeling this off. I think I can see how this is wired. Um, so there's one cable off the starter battery this one up to this split charge well it's not even a split charge relay it's just a relay and then the other one goes off then to the uh, leisure batteries which is that one over there nice to see nothing's fused so we need to do something about that uh, but in the first instance I see why that's not charging um, I would imagine if, if, I'm, if I was going to if I was a betting man that I would think it was this this relay here. Um, bit pants really that. And of course no fusing at all. Got through to both safety though, don't start me. And there's another one here, look. See that there? No fuse. Got through to both safety though. I have a thing about that. Some of you guys probably already know. Some boat safety guys are great. The ones around here, useless. Not all of them, not all of them, there's a couple. But anyway, right, what I wanna see, uh, this has got fuse boat safety, I, I guess. I doubt that's been changed for years. But no fusing, no isolation. Well done guys, whoever that is. That's why I don't do boat safety anymore. Anyway, different story. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put a multimeter on that starter battery, start the engine, make sure all my uh, important bits are out of the way, because I'm stood on the uh, hull. Uh, this is actually a V. I mean, you can tell, but yeah, it's a it's a V hull. This one, unusual for a little narrow boat. Right, let's put the alternator, let's put the uh, meter on, and see if the alternator is actually working. Right, let's just pop that on the positive there, and that on the negative. If it's going to hold, which it probably won't. Okay, let's give uh, Susie a ring and just see why, if she's having if she's having any engine problems. I can't see anything for the glow plugs. Um, don't seem to be any position for that. Right, let's give Susie a ring. Let's see what she says. Darn it, keeping it real. Um, there's a decompressor here. So that was just pulled up, so I hadn't seen that. So that should, let's see if that works better. I think it might. That sounds nice.
right, so that probably just comes off the um, ignition switch somewhere. So I haven't got 12 volts on here to switch that relay into life. So let's just see where the negative goes. Uh. Oh man, that's loose, is it? Positive goes where? Right, day or two later, back on the boat. Here's the little Cyrix split charge relay. So what have you got here? Uh, you've got your battery in, battery one, which in our case will be our starter. Battery two, which in our case will be the two leisure batteries. It's quite a small system on here. Uh, you've got a reference to ground. And also you've got a little positive uh, terminal here, or can be. And what that'll do is close the switch to allow you to jump start off your leisures. Okay, so if you wanna, if you wanna look at the drawing, uh, maybe just pause that there. It's quite simple, really. Um, and they, they do actually show you fuses in there, of course. Um, but not on, not on both sides, which I find a bit weird. So I always put a fuse as near as practically possible at to a battery source, power source. So you'd have one here, of course you would, but I reckon you should have one here as well. So if this cable shorts down or whatever, or maybe something happens with this relay, uh, there's nothing to protect this cable. So I don't think that's right, Mr. Victron. But anyway, I'm gonna put one in. So this is a, a, four, a 50 amp alternator on here, not, nothing particularly big. So, um, and this is a 120 amp uh, Cyrix. So uh, two MIDI fuses uh, in the system, one near the battery on the leisures, one near the battery on the starter. Uh, 50 amps in there. So uh, that's max out on the alternator, which it's never gonna be max out. Well, it might be close, but 50 amps, the right one. Um, 10 mil cable, 10 mil cable for the load side. Uh, 10 mil cable will carry around about 70 amps, so and it's, the, the distance is really short. So, a few other things, a little bit of a pet hate of mine. I see it all the time. Um, I've just popped up to get some lugs. Didn't quite have the right ones in stock. So, they're six mil, the batteries are eight mil, and these little uh, midi fuses are five mil. So guess what, I've got five. Five, six, and eight mil lugs, 10 mil lugs. The amount of times I see uh, the wrong lug on the wrong terminal is, is off the scale really, to be honest. So, um, 10 mil lugs, six mil hole okay and that's the right that's the right lug and the right size uh well the right size the lug's the right size for the cable and for the stud it's going on to always use a proper ratchet tool as well folks the amount of times i see little pliers and all that sort of stuff okay so a nice good termination there it doesn't come off I will also insulate that with uh, some tape just around the body of the lug itself. Um, why do I use tape? Well, it's quite simple, really. Um, hot work. Yeah, you could use a hairdryer, I guess. Well, a hairdryer wouldn't do it, not a heat shrink. Um, you can use a hot air gun, but that's all, that's all classed as hot work. And my insurance has a real aversion to hot work. Things like soldering irons and blow torches and all that sort of stuff, so. I tape it, but if you, if you do right, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. So this is going to go through to the um, the stud that's uh, on the battery one. These are the in, um, intelligent um, relays as well, so it detects the voltage on the on the starter on battery one, 
and will switch on at a predetermined level. I can't remember what that is actually, I'll have a look in a second. Something like 13.6 or something like that. It, this, this, this will then switch on. So that's one, I'm just gonna cut a piece off there because I don't need very much. And there's a shake proof washer on there as well. So make sure that's on there. Right, so I'm tightening them up. coming out the same side because that's where they're going to fit on the bulkhead there so it's in there that one out the way there was an old bracket here so I've taken that out fuse in there so I'm not sure if that's got a spreader plate in it or it's soldered and tinned that cable going into that clamp because they're non-compliant with uh, boat safety scheme so um, it doesn't look like it is it doesn't look like it's tinned I mean so it looks like it's non-compliant Another boat. How did it get through boat safety? You tell me. Well, like I said, these um, these midi fuses, they have a five mil uh, stood on them. And if you see, five mil fits on there perfectly. Whereas if you put a six mil on, over here, Put a six mil on so there's only a mil gap i've seen worse but still you're reducing the contact area so if you're going to put a crimp on make sure it's the right one eh? one fuse M8 uh, look battery two fuse M8 look and the ground which is only really for a reference uh, it's a six mil doesn't need to be that big actually but uh, yeah well I'll do I'll uh, speak to the uh, customer about these these I mean this isn't being new so okay I don't really like putting cables on the clamp these are for clamping, not for cables. So, you know, these really should be. Uh, looks like that. Oh no, some there are some post type in there. There's a couple of post type on that one. 
But anyway. I'll just speak to the customer about that, see if she wants to change them. She probably won't. But, you know, you can only wire with what you've got, really. To a point, you know. If it's dangerous, I wouldn't do it. But it's, it's just not right. So I'll, I'll put that on the invoice so she knows. I recommend they, they're changed and possibly that one is non-compliant. But let's get these connected up and I can get some testing done. All right, you can see the relay there. Here's the negative reference. Uh, battery one, which is the starter. Battery two, up to the two leisure batteries. Not not a sophisticated system by any stretch, but uh, no, will it suffice? Yeah. Will it do the job? Yep. Right, okay, so let's uh, give that a whiz then, shall we? See what's happening. Okay, just an update, reading the manual. RTFM we used to call it, but you figure that out yourself. Um, 13 volts is the switching. So when the starter battery gets to 13, it'll switch over and charge in parallel with the other battery. But there is a 10 minute delay on these Civics ones as well. So it does prioritize the starter, make sure the starter's got what it needs first before it hops over, hops over and charges the leisures. So we'll start the engine and um, just uh, let that run out and uh, make sure it uh, everything's running as it should be. Noisy engine. Um, I'll show you what was there before. Woefully inadequate. Yeah, not very good at all. Anyway, that's going in the bin. Right, I'm gonna let this charge for a little bit longer, keep an eye on it. A little job, yeah, for uh, Civics Dash CT from Victron. Nice, easy uh, split charging system. It's automatic, so nothing to worry about. Uh, ideal for vans and stuff like that as well, so. Right, on to the next one. Short video this time, guys, but uh, hope that was some use.